Today I'm making a quick video showing you something going on on a 2012 Audi A4. This one has a two liter engine. It has boost pressure regulation fault at the boost set point not reached. I think it was P0299. Super, super common fault on these. Um, usually 90% of the time on this particular model ends up being a turbo wastegate issue. It can be other things, of course. You know, it can be a boost leak anywhere or a, a several other things. You could have even like an actuator acting up or something like that. But on this model, when you see that fault, most likely it's gonna end up being the turbo wastegate. I'll show you exactly what happens here. The actual um, exhaust housing on the turbo here, the hot side of the turbo, where the, uh, where the arm goes through for the wastegate actually just kind of opens up. It get, gets loose over time, the pivot wears out and it ends up getting a lot of play in it, as well as the arm itself, the hole where the actuator attaches, gets uh, a lot of play in it as well. So in turn, this arm, this uh, little, the wastegate door itself is loose. In this position right now, this arm should be, this should be, this is back fully. Oh, so when it extends, this is when it wants to, you know, when you're venting boost pressure, this actually comes out. So in this position, this should be pushed up against the housing. Not like, you know, not super hard, but it, it shouldn't have this kind of, this is just a, a massive boost leak. So the door should be shut. So, um, you know, typically we end up replacing the turbo for this. There are repair kits where, um, even though it's not technically, it's not very, really a serviceable part, you can see that the way it's assembled right here, this, this lever goes through here and then it's welded in place or maybe even brazed. It's, it looks like it may even be brazed. But whatever the case, if you want to do one of those repair kits, that's something, you know, something you can do if you're feeling adventurous. <laughs> you can grind this off, pull this straight through, and, and slide the new one in with the new arm, attach it to the wastegate, or replace the actuator as well, depending on how that all looks. And then make sure this is clocked correctly. You know, you have to drill out the, the housing for a new bushing. And, depend, and, you know, make sure this is all assembled in place. This door has some pressure on it. And then uh, this is positioned correctly before you weld it back into place again. But um, that is definitely something that you can do. That's what um, a lot of shops that are rebuilding these are doing. And the kits themselves are super cheap. You can buy them everywhere for $10 or whatever. They're, they're, they're not very expensive, but it's um, a little bit of risk involved being that you're kind of setting the preload on this. It's not, um, you know, it's not that difficult, but um, there is some risk involved. But yeah, you can see right now when I wiggle this, that arm shouldn't be, shouldn't be moving like that so that's all um for warranty purposes and everything like that we typically sell the customer a new turbo at this point but um yeah this one I'm, i think i'm gonna repair and um yeah shouldn't be that bad so i'm gonna grind off this weld push this lever off slip this through put the new one on you know or drill it out put the bushing in put the new one on and uh yeah i'll kind of show you what that looks like there you go so now i can show it a little bit better all i did was i went in with a little cutoff wheel and i just cut the little pivot point until this thing fell off and then i pulled it right through it's pretty easy to do the um the actual the rod itself for the for the wastegate doesn't seem to have any significant wear on it but the bushing in the exhaust housing is oblong you can see if you look at the, the left side of this frame here you can see that it's uh it's smaller it's actually been pulled kind of oval so that bushing should be replaced not really a huge deal the, you can just kind of pound the bushing out and install a new one and the biggest amount of wear here is actually the, the this pivot arm itself you can see this pivot arm is ovaled really bad you know if you put it if you put it right on where it should be there's there's tons and tons of movement so that's probably the biggest the biggest thing that's worn out but um, kind of all has to be replaced anyways. So I'm gonna get one of those kits now and uh, replace the bushing, replace this little valve, push the new push the new arm into place, make sure everything's positioned correctly, and then tack weld it into position. Um, I kind of cut it with a cutoff wheel like this, so when I'm reinstalling this, I can kind of pay attention to how I have it, how I have the grooves in it. Not that that's really gonna make much difference because you know, there's no real reason. You're not gonna be able to really get this position next to it anyways in such a way where it's gonna help you. But I just kind of did that just so I could see the angle roughly how it's at, you know. But um, whatever the case, you're gonna end up just 
putting this thing together and positioning everything the best you can and just tacking it into place. So that's it. It's not too difficult of a job. Um, this is a pretty fundamental thing, but just to show you kind of how this thing regulates boost pressure, there's the, there's the hole itself for the wastegate. So that connects directly to connect, it connects directly to the ports here coming straight out of the engine and uh, it just bypasses the turbocharger. So that's how a wastegate like this functions. So all it is is, you know, typically when the wastegate actuator is not actuated, this door here, this hole is shut. It's sealed by the wastegate door and um, all of the air straight from the engine is going into the turbo. When the, when it reaches a certain set point that the, uh, not only the spring here determines, but also the ECU. It opens this door, it moves this actuator, and it and it creates a leak right here by opening the door. So that vents boost pressure, that that pretty much bypasses the boost pressure straight into your downpipe. So that's all. It's a pretty pretty simple mechanism, and uh, yeah, they work pretty good until until they don't. So thanks for watching.